While many students burn down schools and damage property when protesting, Wits University students have decided to do things a bit differently. The Student Representative Council, SRC, aims to raise 1 million rands for the excluded NASFA students by the end of February. Wits SRC President Mitrebo Lamini joins me in studio to tell us more about the 1 million rand campaign. Thanks for joining me, Mitrebo. Thank you for having us. Uh, now, I've just mentioned that you guys yes. are trying to raise 1 million rand for these students. Can you tell us more about this campaign? Well, uh, this is a campaign that uh, didn't come uh, uh, out of, uh, of uh, the blue. We found ourselves uh, in a crisis in the beginning of the year, where about 2,788 of our fellow brothers and sisters were being informed by the university together with the government to say this year they don't have a future at VETS. How were they saying that? They said that there is no money for NSFAS. NSFAS is broke, thus it can't accommodate everyone who's in the system. And it really shocked us because these are returning students and these are final year students. So if you are going to pay for someone in first year and second year, third year, then in fourth year you are saying there is no money. Then that's poor investment. So then our government is taking us 10 years back. If we are going to operate like this, then really, really as a country we are not going forward. Now, we protested and protested again and met with the, the ministry and we met with NSFAS National to raise our concerns, to say this can't be happening. 2,788 is a huge number and it can't be accepted. And because these are the poor of the poorest, by the way, mm -hmm. because uh, for you to qualify to be on NSFAS, it means you have nothing. You have no other alternative but to rely on social grant. Nobody then is happy to live on handouts. These people are not happy that they are on NSFAS. No one wants to be in that situation because it's a dehumanizing process. To apply for NSFAS and to qualify for NSFAS, it's dehumanizing, it's humiliating because you have to prove year in, year out, Every year you prove how poor you are. Mm. That's how the, our government has, has, uh, has, has, has pro, uh, came with the, uh, the, the program of NSFAS to say, show us how poor you are. You go around getting death certificates, getting uh, proof that uh, your, your grandmother is, is living on HIV grants and all those kind of things. Now, at the end, after proving all those things, then uh, the university together with NSFAS and the ministry says there is no money. No, I just want to come in there. This 1 million rand is meant to cover the 9,340 rands for each of these 2,788 students. Now, what happens if the NASFAS funding falls through come April, May, which is what you're waiting for? Will these students be allowed to continue? And do you have a plan if the money does not come through? What will you do then? Well, uh, we, we have, as I said, that uh, there are four culprits in this problem. Uh, there is treasure. There is the ministry of higher education, there is NSFAS itself, then there is VETS. These are four role players, and all of them have an obligation, they have a role to play. Have you engaged with these yes. role players? Yes, we, we haven't engaged with, uh, with Treasury, we, but we have engaged with the ministry, we have engaged with VETS, and we have engaged with NSFAS. And NSFAS said to us they have 400 million that they have collected from those who are paying back, but they, they will wait for uh, their own investigations from other universities, then that is when they will know how much they are going to give vets. And then we have engaged the minister. We went to the minister of higher education. We said to him, declare this thing as a crisis, period. Go on national TV, tell the nation that this is a crisis, and then talk to vets and say, vets, take these people to class while we negotiate, because you might not have money now, but it doesn't mean you won't have money by April. But if you have money by April and these people are already deregistered, then it's useless having that money. Declare this thing as, as a crisis and then talk to vets. Then he said he's asking for 48 hours. 48 hours, he asked for another 48 hours. Then we were running against time. We had to fundraise because we had to keep these people in class while we, we are opening the space of engagement further. Now, speaking of keeping them in class, so, so you're saying that they are in class and they're currently you know, going to school. They are being allowed on the premises. Currently, they are not registered. They are not registered, but, but are they going to But their student cards are still operating up until the end of the 28th. 
Oh. If they are not registered by the 28th, the system automatically kicks, them out. kicks them out. So we were running against time. We had to, re to register them, come with means. Yes, there is an issue that once we register them, where are they going to stay? Yes, what, what are, are they, they going, going to, to eat? eat? Well, as an SRC, uh, we, have, we have looked on that one. Mm -hmm. Now, from tomorrow, we are going to engage with Jose Maboneng and, and, and South Point, because those are the big uh, guns and accommodation around Pram, to say how can they assist us in this crisis, because this is a crisis. And now, today, I, I went to Sunnyside, one of the residences. I've already started engaging res residence students, because those are the ones who eat at dining hall. We are saying to them, because they have three meals a day. We are saying to our fellow vets, surrender one meal a day for our, f for, for our fellow brothers and sisters. They will have two, they will have one. And we are looking forward to meeting with the gift of the givers be be before the end of the week to see how they can actually assist us. We've already made uh, a, a plea with other students to say, give us books, don't sell us the books, give yes. us books for free. And we will, because we want to show the government that it is possible. Because the reality is there is lack of will from the Minister of Higher Education, there is, the minister is not taking us serious. Because let me tell you, if the minister knew what he was doing in his portfolio, we wouldn't be sitting with this crisis now. Because this thing is happening every year. It's now a norm, it's a ritual. Some people now uh, know that, no, we will be pending come January. But the minister mm. is still calling himself a minister. With 2,788 people, who must go home? Who must vote next year? Let me tell you, if I lose this 2,788, how am I going to go to Soweto for a door-to-door? -door? Because they are from there. You are saying to these people, they must go to Malamlela there and fight tribal wars because they have nothing to do. You are saying they must go back to Soweto and, and fight foreigners there because the doors of learning have closed. The ANC in January was speaking about the, uh, the Freedom Charter to which President Zuma spoke very well about it. One of uh, uh, the clauses in the Freedom Charter is talking about education. the doors of higher education will be opened to all and we will be provided scholarships and bursaries through government. But now, the very same minister is failing the president, is failing the freedom chart. Now we are saying to this, to this minister, listen here, declare this thing as a crisis, talk to vets, we have played our part. Okay, Mkabo, let me come in there, because th th this is getting qu quite heated, uh, and you're making uh, a lot of great points here. Now, you've mentioned that you've met up with the stakeholders. You mentioned that you've, you know, you've spoken to students about surrendering meals. You've spoken to South Point, some of the ac accommodation, um, the people that can yes. offer accommodation to these yes. students. Now, in terms of the, 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 the citizens, you've, you've gone out and said, we need one million rand. Yeah. Um, we need donations. Yes. H have, have you had a good response, and how much have you guys raised thus far, if any? The, the, the the, the response is tremendous. Uh, we, didn't if, we didn't get only money, but okay. we are getting uh, a bursaries. Okay, we have right. Notting Roads who have said, look, we don't have money, but we can give you bursaries for 52 people. Give us 52 people who are doing LLB in the 2,788, and we will fund them. And then you have the open aimers who gave us 120,000 as well. So you are getting, you are we, getting we, we a great are. response and, and, the, and you're getting money. Are. And we have the, the, the province, the free state. That one we can't, uh, uh, we have to talk about that one. The premier of free state drove all the way from free state to come and meet us as an SRC. That time we have a premier here in Gauteng. But the premier of free state came here, met with us as SRC. He said, SRC, what is wrong? Why are you making noise? We explained. He said, listen, give me everyone who's from free state there. And as a province, we will see what to do. And Mpumalanga did the same. As I'm talking to you now, we are sitting with 2,000, roughly it's 2,200 from the 2,788 because of the provinces. Now, Mkabo, you, you guys have a very unique but very constructive solution to this problem, yeah. and, and it's very commendable. You guys yes. are doing really well, or I'll say. What about the places um, or the institutions like TUT? who often, who have been protesting, the protests have been coming, have, have, have become violent most of the time. What do you say to those students who are continuing to shut down their institutions instead of coming up with solutions like the VITS SRC has done? Well, uh, to, be, to be honest with you, you see, students are forced to react in this manner. You guys haven't reacted in this manner? We, 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 we didn't react in this manner, but we started there. Okay. Uh, we started with protests 
and which had a potential of getting out of hand. But we realized the magnitude of protesting and not raising the funds. Okay. It was a risk that we took. But the greatest risk is not to risk at all. Mm. Because it is a risk to say, let us not protest. Let us raise money and take these people to class. Now, the, you have asked a, a, a good question. What will happen if the money doesn't come? But mm. because we are positive that we have an ANC government that has the love for the people and that prioritizes a, a education, that they will realize the need to, 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 to talk to their comrade uh, a plate to say, chief, act on this matter. Now, we are saying to the other universities, there is another way uh, other than violence. You have people who went to TOT, your ex-students, the alumni. Talk to those alumni. Engage those alumni. Talk to people because, to tell you the truth, corporate have mm. interest in universities because that's where their future is. Mm. That's where this is the future of the country. So you're saying government should bring in the private sector? They should. They should, and, and more than anything, there's only one solution in this, in this crisis. It is for the Ministry of Education, Blade and Zimand, to control the autonomy of these universities. Up until you the autonomy is controlled, you have vets, a symbol degree at vets is 50,000. Mm. A PA symbol degree. A PA symbol degree at UJ is 28,000. So there's no, there is, there's it, no it, balance. It's ridiculous. And it's not consistent. An upfront fee payment at VET is 9,460. An upfront fee payment at ROT is, is 3,000. This is ridiculous. Up until the minister develops the will, I said he doesn't have the will. Because if he had the will, he could have seen that this is nonsense. He could we're, have controlled this We're running this out investment. of time, and I just want to ask you this because I, I think it's a very important quote. You, you mentioned uh, Nelson Mandela's quote about the most powerful weapon you can use is education. Yes. Elaborate on that just very briefly. To be honest, a, 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 a nation that doesn't take care uh, of its education system is as good as, as dead. There's no country without education. Actually, there are two important things in a country. is the, is the health system and education. If these two things have failed, that country must be declared as a failed state. Currently, we are approaching that. It can happen that in 20 years, we still have protests of people wanting to access a, 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 a higher education. It can happen. And we can't allow one minister to collapse our country and the good job that the ANC is doing. We will critique that minister up until he realizes that he's leading us astray. Ngebo, thank you very much for joining us on the News at 8. Thank you very much. That was our studio guest, Ngebo Lamini, talking to us about the One Million Rand campaign aimed at helping excluded NASFA students by the end of February.